Right, this is part two of Sheila's visit to Holy Trinity Church, Kingston Seymour, and one of her outings. Just revisiting this church, which I've been, been to before and, and just took still photographs of the Denmead graves set within the church grounds. And they're over there. Plus a couple of Wallace graves I found, which I've got written on my piece of paper here, so they must be of relevance. And I've just found another Wallace, so I shall make a note of it. We've got John Wallace, who died March the 19th, 1906, she was 72. Also Mary, wife of the above, who died May the 8th, 1911, age 77. Also Ella, daughter of the above, who died Feb the 20th, 1972. It looks like 80 or 98, I think she is, or it could be 88, but it's not like 98. So we've, we've identified a Wallace. So I'm just having another quick look round, actually. More griffins, look. I, the griffins didn't, didn't feature, but they're so prominent here. There's a big patch of them. It's a very prominent name in the graveyard. Yeah, it's very pretty, isn't it, here? You've got, like I said, you've got that moat. The moat that goes all the way round the church. Oh, that's good. We've actually got the bell chiming, which we'll get on tape now. Look, it's midday. And um, we can actually see it and hear it chiming at the same time. So that's really good. Those same bells probably that chimed when the Denmeads were walking the earth. <clears throat> and of course, there might be still Denmeads around. You know, what was to say there isn't any? You know what I mean? I suspect there are. I mean, one day somebody might be interested, you see, just because I mean, a lot of people, not everyone's interested in tree just because I am, see. I'll just park the bike there again in a minute. Just, they don't always open everything. That bit's open for a minute, so I'm just coming in. Of this parish, somebody... Oh, I can't read it anyway. Edward. Edward something or other. Yeah. It might be open. Who knows? No, they rarely open them, you know. Friend, this ancient church open stands for thee. Well, it's not open, though. That thou must enter, rest, think, kneel, and pray. Remember whence thou art and what must be thine end. Remember us, then go, oh, go thy way. Oh, yeah, they're not letting me in now, are they? January the 20th, 1606, and the fourth of year of James the first. And in you, oh, that's, I think this might be where that tsunami came. An inundation of the sea water by overflowing and breaking down the sea banks happened in this parish of Kingston Seymour and many others adjoin, adjoin in. By Refon, where of many persons were drowned and much cattle and goods were lost, the water in the church was five feet high and the greatest part lay on the ground about ten days. This was written by a William Bower. And that's... That's tied up with that huge wave that suddenly came on a lovely, on a lovely day, out of nowhere. And it features this church with somebody clinging to the spire, because there's not many spire churches, actually, in Somerset. And that stuck out, I always remember that, and I've still got that video that I did of that documentary by a variety of people, including geophysicists and geologists, who studied the, um, the ground and the sediments and everything that had been washed up here. Right, the plan since to stay here very long. It's just a brief visit because I'd already done an album, photo album, and um, I had done a lot of archive research in Western library where they keep the archives and they've got a family history stuff in there as well. I looked up births, deaths, marriages, that sort of thing. Just in case one day one of the Coley children or somebody suddenly decides they want to know their Somerset roots. Um, I haven't had any 
interest shown so far but you see if there had been someone in the family that was interested I am sure they would have liked to have shared this knowledge with me I mean have they been here have they videoed this lovely church for example that was here during that great storm when that tsunami hit they could have had people <coughs> drown within their family even Let me just park up here a minute. Yes, yeah, so I'm just doing a quick scan a minute. Some of the old graves and some Eddingtons here. James and Hannah Eddington. Now they came from Tickenham. Um, they look pretty. And some Haymans as well. 1845, 1814. That's very old graves indeed. But of course, they, like everywhere, they do remove graves. And then we've got all these over here, which of which I just do a very quick scan because I don't want my bike to go missing. It's, it's this half term, you see. I'm just having a quick scan from here. So there's another nice view of the church, look, and that lovely tower. I haven't, I remember going around here before and I haven't come across any more Denmies. There's more Griffins there. Uh, there might be more Wallaces. I'm just having, yes, there is a Wallace. There's a Herbert Cyril Wallace who died the 28th of November 1983, age 74, and his wife Ida Daisy Wallace. I mean, these could really be related, you see, who died the 10th of November 2003, age 86. Then there's a Dennis James Wallace, called home on the 2nd of October 1954, age 41. Also Jeanette Mary, darling child of the above, who died 18th of March 1954, age 5. But she's interred at Yatton. Jesus called a little child, also of Sybil Mary, wife of the above, who died in 1967, age 55. So there were some more Wallaces then. Like I said, I found a connection with a Wallace, so um, they could be related to the Coleys. Although, of course, it isn't Coleys; they are. They, it was Denmeads, but it comes down through um, Dave Coley's mother and her mother, and all that that came to the Denmeads. It was um, Enid's mother who was the Denmead girl. So that is Brendan, Damien and Aaron's great-grandmother who came from Somerset. Not very far back, I must let you know as well. Not very far back at all in time when you consider I've gone back over a thousand years with my tree. Well, there's another Wallace. Look at that. William Wallace, who died August the 6th, 1878, aged, looks like 40-something years. And also Emma, and that's all that's on that one. Well, there you go, look. And then there's another one, another James Wallace. These are disturbed, who died May 1885, age 55. And Harriet, wife of the above, and that bit's all broken off, see? That's all broken off. That's what happens when they don't repair them. So Wallace was quite a significant name, I've realised now, in this village. See, when you come back on second visits, you often find other things. It just shows you. And there's the foot grave. Look, William Wallace and E. Wallace. And who's this here? Oh, another Wallace. Sacred to the memory of Mary Jane, the beloved child of John and Jane Wallace of this parish, who died the 11th of May in 1832, aged four years. Also of the memory of the above John Wallace, who departed this life the 16th day of April, 1867, aged 70. 
also to the memory of Jane, relic of the above John Wallace, who died December the 26th, Boxing Day, 1871, age 74. Now it's a good job I've got this because if you look, see, that is going to fall off. That will not remain like that for long. And this is probably their footstone. This is the footstone. So you've got Mary Jane, 1832, who died. 1867 and 18 whatever that last one was so there you go very significant a lot of Wallace graves and I've got Wallace on the bit of paper now I'm just going over to these creme stones because we might find someone even closer who's a Wallace somebody definitely married now there's a hell and I'm doing hells for my cousin Barbara Doris Hale, beloved wife and mother, 1921 to 2003, of W. Malcolm Hale, devoted husband, 1921 to 2006. So you never know if you're doing stuff. Now there's a Travis. I came across a Travis somewhere in the folder. The Denmead folder. Richard John Travis, who died 1972, age 33. So he's quite young. Yeah, I remember the name Travis. Now, is that a Wallace there? I think it might be a Wallace. Is it Rosina Wallace? Died 1983, age 78, and Edgar Francis Wallace, yes. He died the 12th of March, 1984, age 81. So yes, we've come further up the line with the Wallaces. That lovely view though, isn't that beautiful everyone? There's my bike flashing away over there. Yes, yeah, so we found some more. And of course there'll be other Wallaces, younger ones, definitely. So that was very well worthwhile. There's more Wallaces here. I mean, I don't know how strong a connection. It might not be direct. It could have been a brother and sister that married a Wallace, you see. So, although it might not be like grandparent or it's still in the family though and I always do everybody I do I'll just go over here because this will be the end of part two coming up now and then I'm going off on the bike for a bit of a cycle round just on a last minute check there's some really big old ones here I mean I don't know who this one also for example Somebody, George Octavus Smith Piggott, rector of the parish. Sounds like that, don't they? Reverend G. O. Smith Piggott, died 1934. No, his daughter did. Yes, yeah, so that's the vicars. Right then, I'm going on for a little cycle. I will need to do more videos because I, I want to go to a village called Ken today. I'm going to go back to Congress for another time. Over and out then, folks. <laughs>